Beatrice Josiah, and I am, of course, the owner of Alaya Waste Beats. Um, I am here because Lisa, Lisa sent me um, a DM. Y'all send me DMs every day. <laughs> I do not answer most of them. And I made an announcement about six or nine months ago that I was going to stop answering DMs because it was getting so overwhelming with the questions about how to run a waste beat business that it was doing two things. It was, it was disturbing my energy. Like I couldn't, I was trying to orient myself because I'm a nice person. So I wanted to be a nice person, but then I also wanted to make sure that I was conserving my energy properly. And so after a couple of years in the business and sort of answering the questions I could answer, I just decided that I was going to not do that. And it is, it always feels a kind of way when I don't answer, when I just delete the message, because that is what I said. And, and I'm saying this because maybe some of you have contacted me. I want to tell you that I love you and I appreciate whatever question you sent me. Um, but I came into this business in a very, very interesting way that I'd like to share with all of you. So I'm a teacher. Before Alayo, I have taught mindfulness to women um, using refraining techniques. So silence, stillness, and fasting. And I've been doing that for over, well over 16, 17 years now. Um, and way speeds came into my life and into my orbit really as a tool for doing what I had been doing all of that time. Um, so when I turned 40 years old, a girlfriend of mine gifted me a strand of waist beads for my 40th birthday because I was one, wearing a bikini for the first time in my life, and two, I was unlearning lots and lots and lots of things in order to really become who I am. And so that day on my birthday, at my birthday party on the beach, the, my girlfriend tied the bead on me. And instantly, like I'm sure you all have encountered with the women that you have tied, instantly I was changed. Um, where I had been feeling kind of embarrassed or subconscious um, out there on the beach, as soon as she tied the waist bead around me, I felt covered from my neck to my ankles. Because I am very, very, very familiar with spiritual technology and tools. Um, I understood that this was something more than beads around my waist. Immediately I did. Um, I didn't know what it was, but I knew that before she had tied me, because this was a friend of mine, I had also glimpsed them on her waist. Now, all of you, again, who follow me know I show my waist beads. You, I, you can catch me with a crop top on. You know, I put them outside of my clothes. Um, she was not the kind of woman who did that, but because we were very close friends, she, one day she may have been cooking in my kitchen or I was at her kitchen and I saw, glimpsed her beads on her waist accidentally because she had never said anything to me about them. I never asked. So I didn't really know what was happening. Now, mind you, this was five years ago, not that long ago, six years ago. I didn't know what a waist bead was at all. And so I'm, I'm saying that for some context here. Because I had been practicing these other things, all of the magic that people experience from having their waist beads tied with me is an amalgamation of a whole bunch of things that were happening long before I even knew what a waist bead was. So I didn't come to this space to make waist beads. In fact, I was not interested at all. I wore that waist bead and it was changing me fast. Every day it was changing my posture. It was changing the way I felt in my body. It was changing the way I thought about my body. It was changing the way I interacted with other bodies. Like it was really showing up for me. But when people would ask me if I was interested in making waist beads, come to my waist bead party, and like back then, I'm gonna say back in the day, cause it's a whole nother world now. I swear to God, 10 waist bead makers follow me every single day. I didn't know four at the time. So back in the day, when you wanted to get, you know, a community around waist beading, it was really all about the women who were wearing them saying, let's get together and make them. I was a full-time HR professional. I was not interested <laughs> in getting together after work to string them teeny tiny beads on a needle. And like I just 
didn't get it. I could buy them for $4 from the lovely young African girl in Lamert Park. I was buying them by the bag, by the bag, between two and $6. I don't think I ever paid more than $10 for a waist bead when I was buying them. So this is my mind frame around waist beading as a wearer. Well, I was buying them for everybody I knew because I was already a teacher. I was saying to the women, my daughter, my mother, my coworkers, my boss, all of my clients, you have to do this. You have to tie this around your waist. And the language that we use very, and the language that I was very particular, but the language that we used around waist beading was formulated while I was becoming initiated into wearing them and then tying my friends and family and, and coworkers. And so if you've ever heard my spiel, is what my daughter calls it, if you've ever heard that, all of that language is really developed in the practice of waist bead wearing and not the practice of waist bead making because those spaces are two very different things. Um, and so the young lady who was making the waist beads in the Merck Park that I was buying them from so happily, she disappeared. God literally took her away. And so I was like, okay. Now, the Merck Park, for some reference, is about 45 minute drive from my house in LA traffic, which is real traffic. I drove there five weeks in a row trying to figure out where this girl was with this magic that I needed. And she was just gone. And so I was like, okay, cool, because God is who God is. I'm not going to trip. I'm just going to go on about my business. And then one day I was downtown Los Angeles shopping um, for waist bead. I mean, I'm sorry, for things for a girlfriend's birthday party. And she said to me, let's go in this bead store because I'm going to make some waist beads. Now, she knew me very well. She knew full well I was not interested in making no waist beads. But I was like, cool, I'll go in with you. And when I walked into the waist, I mean, to the bead store, the beads captivated me, like they stole me. So what you see now, if you come into our studio, or if you've seen any of our imagery, what you see now, like the awe that people have is really what I experienced the first time I walked into the bead store. The colors literally took my breath away. So much so that I was like, all right, cool, I gotta buy something out of here. And I can't just be, buying beads i'm a grown woman with a job like i gotta make something with these beads so i bought the beads and the needle and all the things and again if you come into our space ours is an open studio so when you come to shop um when you come to be have a consultation or be tied the girls who work with us work in that same space so the setup that you see is exactly the setup that I did the very first day I sat down to my dining room table while, my, while I still had a couch and a TV and you know, house stuff where I currently now live and work. And my daughter was reading a book and I was making beads and I fell into what the Buddhists call samadhi. I literally left the building. And I was gone for about an hour and 45 minutes making that first single color waist bead Jesus. And I was like, this was blissful, but nothing about that made me feel like I could run a business on something that took me an hour and 45 minutes to make. Like the way my time is set up, that waist bead would have been about $250 and it was a single color glass bead. Like it just wasn't a thing that would occur to me. But I wrote about it. Because I'm a teacher, because I had been writing about mindfulness experiences online, I wrote about making that way speed and how it was transforming me in the very same way as wearing it. So making it sent me to a different sort of elevated energetic space. And in four minutes, somebody was like, how much is it? And I was like, how much is what? And they were like, the way speed. I was like, oh, baby, the way my time is set up, <laughs> it's not for sale. Like, it's not, it's not a thing I could ever sell you because it wasn't a commodity. It was an experience from the beginning. 
So when people come to Alaya, when people talk about Alaya, when they talk about the experience, they are falling into that same place I fell into when I first made the way speed. When people, we do um, a tent, a white tent, um, when we do pop up sometimes, and the experience again of the beads is that they come from the sky. And so when you walk into the tent, you're looking up, or if you've seen us um, at the Essence Festival, the beads are above the women. And a young man came into my studio who owns one of the products that we sell. And he, he mentioned that. He mentioned that the way we set up beads literally envelops people in the experience of them. So again, I'm not a really, what do they call these people? I'm not an art director. I'm not a design student. I'm not even a business student. I'm a good listener. I'm a good listener. So when God says, write this and tell the people what happened, I wrote that and I told the people what happened. And then what they said in response was, we want one. And I didn't have any, because let me tell you what I did know. I did know I wasn't going to be selling no beads for no $4 and no $6 because I was an HR professional. Like, I wasn't going to be doing that. That didn't make any sense. All of the people that I knew that sold waste beads sold them for that amount. The price structure that you ladies are working with, I'm going to almost guarantee came from the setup that we do. I'm, I'm almost certain because no way in the world would any of you be considering doing this if you were charging the prices that these beautiful African girls are charging in these parks, in these cities, none of you. And so let me tell you how this price structure and everything else about Alayo came to be from that first day. Because the young lady did say to me, like she just wouldn't let go. She was like, you gotta figure out how much it costs. And so I told God, you gotta figure out how much it costs because I don't have any frame of reference and that reference that I have is a non-starter. And I went to bed and I woke up and the three first price points that we had at Alaya are still the same three first price points that exist today. And everything that I've ever done in the service of this business, because that is my job here as service, everything that I've done in the service of this business, I've done at the behest and the request of the, of the creator. I don't get a brain on it. I don't be trying to get savvy. I don't be looking and cross-checking to see who's doing what. Listen, I don't follow a single way speeder. I need you ladies to understand that what you're asking me in my DM, I don't know the answer to for you. I only know the answer to it for me. This is how I teach the women I tie. This is what I have to say to you. And so when Lisa asked me to come on, I got a little nervous because I don't know what string you should use. I don't know where you should buy beads to string your way. I don't know, sweetheart, because God told me what to do. And I'm certain that if you did the work that's required to do the work at this level, you'll know. And everybody else will have a good time making beads because everybody is not gonna have a waste bead billboard, no. And we all here know that, and that's okay. But if people are looking at Josiah and Elio and not looking at themselves and God, you're gonna get it wrong because you're gonna try to do what I'm doing. I hope that makes sense because I really did want to bless all of you. I really did. And I know that when I tell this to my clients, they win, they grow, they prosper. Because I don't know. People will come into the studio and they'll say, this is what's going on. Tell me what bead to get. I cannot do that. And I'm almost certain that if I sold them a $315 bead and I do have them, they would buy it. And I would be wrong as two left shoes. Because that is not my job. My job is not to tell people what they need to hear from inside of themselves. If I do that, my practice is off track. So I don't know what your practice is. I don't know why you all came to waste beating. 
I don't know what prompted you. I don't know that very first part of the story where I told you about me. I don't know that about you. And so there would be no way for me to give you any advice except to say, sis, listen, 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 listen. Because like I said, I don't follow one waist beater. I don't know what kind of beads you all make. I don't know what kind of string you all use. I don't know where you get, I've never been interested because God is super, super, super faithful to me as God is to you, I promise. And this is not a, a, an end run around telling you key information because I've been saying this from day one. I mean, it is what I'm going to say, and I'm saying it because I trust you. I trust that the people, the women who are going to be in the world doing this work for real will be doing it because God said, do it. And I'm not worried about the rest of the people. I'm not worried about them because people come in and out of careers. You'd be a photographer, then you could be a chef, and you could be a, you can do all of those things. But the people who want to do what we do will have to do the work. Alaya was four years old. We have made a million dollars selling waist beads. So listen to me. It ain't going to take long to find the string. You know what I'm saying? And, and this is the deal. This is the truth about the string. It's the fifth one we've used. If that's any help, you just keep going. You just keep going. Nothing magical happened when I found the right string, except I didn't stop. That's all that happened. I hope that makes sense because I have to imagine uh, waste beads are as old as time and blackness. I bet they wasn't using whatever string I'm using. I bet they wasn't. I just bet they wasn't. We're focusing on the wrong things. We're trying to get somewhere fast and not thorough. So I want you all to be thorough because when I got tied with that waist bead the first time, I rushed back two days later and I said to that girl who tied me, I need more. I need more. And then the second miraculous thing about me wearing waist beads and about how I teach waist bead wearing in conjunction with my other mindfulness practices is she tied some beads on me that had some different colors. So my initial bead was red and yellow. And so after I left the beach that day and I was doing things in my body after she tied the waist bead on me that I had not done as an adult ever because I'm a very serious kind of person. I don't know what people take me as online. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about it, but I'm, I'm like old school grown like your grandmother kind of grown, despite what I look like. So I don't wrestle and I don't play and I don't, I'm, I'm real serious. But when she tied that waist beat around me at the beach, I was playing flag football, I was cartwheeling, I was being in my body in a way that I've never, in a way that reminded me of my daughter who was 12 at the time. And I thought, oh, this is interesting. And I didn't stop myself because I also understood that I wanted to have whatever experience that was that I was having. And when I got home, I looked in the mirror and I was like, what are you? Like, what kind of thing does this? And I heard the spirit say to me, this is what happens when you say yes to your center. This is what happens when you just say yes. You don't have to know what's happening. You don't have to plan what's happening. All you have to do is just keep saying yes to the thing that's calling you. And so two days later, I was back in LA getting more beads. And this time the young lady had tied a white bead on me. And then she tied another one and another one and something was happening in my body that was very discomforting um, in a way that didn't happen when she tied the first bead on. And so immediately I was aware that the white waist bead was too much. It was too much energy. And then, I, and then I was like, oh, oh, these colors are something. These colors are something. Now I'm a yogi, I'm a Kundalini yogi. I've been trained, a trained, um, I guess you call them licensed or certified yogi. I don't teach yoga, but I've been a certified yogi um, since my daughter's, you know, six or something. I don't know, a really long time. But in that training, I understood and I began to study the energetics of color. 
And I know that color, like everything on the planet, has vibrational frequency and different colors vibrate at different frequencies. I understood in that moment that she tied that white waist bead on me that that frequency was too much for me. I am already enough white light. I do not need to short circuit by tying white waist beads on me. So I don't wear them. I think they're beautiful. There are some people who need to draw light. They need to draw people. I don't, clearly, I don't need to do that. I am enough all by myself. And so when I understood that, then it was easy for me to say, because I don't, I didn't make this up. Like this isn't just I science or like this isn't, I mean, you could go on Google and do your own study and then from inside of you relay this in exactly the same or some different kind of way. I don't know. But I knew that I could instruct people to read through these sort of snapshots of these energies and I could trust them to know what was resonant for them again this is why my practice Alayo's practice works so beautifully and why people keep coming back because I give them to themselves they make choices in that energetic and they win again and again and again I don't care if they need a new job or a baby or a man or a car or some sleep, whatever they need, because I've already made it clear that they can access it from inside of them and then tie that waist bead in that same frequency around their waist and pull that thing because they have trusted me and it has worked, they come back. About 70% of our clientele is repeat and repeat and repeat. So when you go into the back of my system, we have an online store and we have a physical studio and then we travel all over the country. I see the same people again and again. That's how the community was born. That's it. I don't do anything. People, I, I saw your questions. I love them. I appreciate them. The answers are not what you think they are. This is not what you think it is. There is no algorithm. There is no class there is no when you first become popular on instagram you start getting all of these people messaging you telling you they're going to teach you how instagram i don't give a shit how instagram works i don't care how instagram works this is not what we're doing this is not why we're winning i don't know shit about ads i run them they work and if that's all you need to know, run the Facebook ads. If, they, if anybody had a question here about whether ads work, run them. They work. Who don't know that? What are you scared of? You cannot do this work scared. Like, run the ads, sis. I ask people when they come in the studio, how'd you hear about us? 60% of them say Instagram, run the ad. If you don't know how to run the ad, pay somebody to run the ad. I pay people. And this is the thing. I made a million dollars. I paid a whole bunch of that money out to beautiful, talented black women to make this show look like a show. I don't know. I don't know. I know Khadija knows how to put together a killer website and online store. I know that she was a baby when I met her and she is a maven at that thing now. You don't even need experts. Grab the people you know who know how to do what they do and trust them and pay them. Pay the people. Don't be in here trying to grab money and stick it all in your pocket. Pay these people because this is why I get paid. Because God knows that I'm a good steward, that I'm gonna make Elio a beautiful place for black women to come and have this magical experience, that I'm gonna play, pay black women real wages so they can really feed themselves and really have somewhere to, like for real, I'm not out here playing with billboards for my own vanity. This belongs to us. It is whole, it has been whole since the beginning of time. It is everything we need and only the people who are willing to access it from the inside will get the full benefit. That's my whole prayer. It's my whole entire prayer. And so these are the things that I have to share. I don't believe that the minutia of the job, the details of the job are the reason why it works. It's not my experience. 
I do not believe that. I know that that is not true. There are some women out here. All y'all got string right now. I see y'all making beads. All y'all got beads. All y'all got string. All y'all got needles. In a pandemic, y'all able to get these tools. If the tool you happen to be using don't work, research the next one. It builds fortitude. Research the next one. You are going to do footwork. Because let me tell you, honey, spiritual healing and spiritual teaching is footwork. These people are going to give you a run for your money. You cannot believe the kind of questions people ask me. You cannot believe the kind of expectations people have or the kind of energy people bring to me. My job is to hold the space. If I can't research three needles, I, I, I'm not going to be able to hold space for people. I'm not going to be able to do it. Like these things that you're going through, these tests, these trials, these fits and starts, it is a part of the work that you are doing for the women you're doing it for. You don't get to just hop out the gate and be like, ooh, I'm winning the race. That is not even how life goes because that's not the experience they're having. How are you going to relate to them if you come to my DM and I give you all the information you need to be me overnight? What are you going to teach somebody? Y'all can unmute at this point. I am finished. I'm over here like, oh, she's amazing. Um, let me tell you, I'm just, I'm done. I'll see y'all in the next round. You know, I just, I don't know what to do with myself right now. Like, I'm, I'm vibrating. Like, literally, I can feel yeah. everything vibrating on me. And this, I just so, so appreciate it. Uh. Lisa, go. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad you started there because to me, this was everything, and I'm sure you guys agree, we needed to hear. And Ms. Giza, I just want to thank you because I had the same exact feeling when I saw your billboards, your digital billboards, you're on a 605, the 405 in the Valley, in LA. And when I saw that, I said, if not for her, this community wouldn't exist. But I just, I don't know, I wasn't bold enough to say quite yet, but I'm just gonna say that because I do, I do believe that. And I just wanna thank you because while you're out here grinding, making a million, paying people, just making an incredible business and living for not just yourself, but other people, you're doing so much for everybody else. I mean, when you mentioned that price point, I know for a fact that has trickled down for us, and I want to say we thank you. And this and is we, the deal. We deserve this. Yeah. We deserve this. But you cannot be under the impression that you deserve something you don't work for. It's just wrong headed. It's just wrong to think that the circle can be complete without you doing your part. It's just wrong. So in the beginning, um, women would message me and they would say to me, the ancestors would not be happy that you are not sharing. It's like, well, the ancestors are gonna have to come and tell me that because they come to me every night. They not coming to me for you. So they would have to come to me like they come every night and they would have to tell me, just I tell that girl where you get that string from. They never did that. They never did that. I also want to say, because this is the kind of thing so this billboard thing is, is beautiful and it's fun and it's been great for my daughter and it's great for, and we did it for the clients because, so the first billboard went up on Slauson and Overhill, which is the blackest, most beautiful corner of the Los Angeles commerce. And I did that because I thought black women deserve to be driving up the street and see their belly beautifully adorned on a billboard. And whatever it costs me, they already paid it. That's the spirit in which I do this work. Because I live in the house that I've always lived in. I drive the car of my dreams. I'm not the things kind of person. I have more money than I've ever been interested in having in my whole life. And I know that that is the beginning. So when God says, do this, and it costs this, I just do it. I do it. I get on the plane and I go to Atlanta and I go to, uh, you know, Philadelphia or to Maryland or wherever because, and, and not that it makes a whole lot of money. It does all right. It pays for itself and there's some change. Because I sat at my table during the pandemic from March 
to June and made more money in that period than I had made all year the previous year. Like, this is not, this is so much bigger. If you're willing to do the work, this is so much bigger than anything in your imagination. It's so much bigger. And I'm happy to be here where I am on the journey because, I mean, I, where else would I be at work? <laughs> I mean, where else would I be? And so I'm, I'm delighted. And, and the reason why there's billboards all over the place is because somebody messed up. So, so it looks good. It looks all bright and shiny, but they ain't had no lights on my billboard in the valley. And I complained. And so they threw me up on the billboard on the freeway. Like, like I don't want y'all to be confused. Real shit is happening over here. This is a real business. This is why when people come in and ask, I don't have time to answer your question. I'm trying to figure out why I ain't no lights on my billboard that I just paid for. I don't want to do the things you can do. You can't do this. You can't give you what I'm giving you right now. You can research stream and spinners. Somebody messaged me and said, what's the name of that spinner in the picture? If you Google, what's the name of the bead spinner in the Alayo picture, I swear to God it'll come up. I'm just talking about time and energy. Don't waste yours and don't waste mine and don't waste your clients. If you don't know what you're doing, say you don't know. If you don't know the answer, say you don't know. It's okay to not know things. I don't know everything, but if you're gonna hold space for people, you better do it as a human because that's who you're holding space for. You better do it as a human because these people, they can smell you. Because I'm out here, that's my job. They can smell the hustle and I'm making sure they can smell the hustle because this is spirit work. This is spirit work and you don't get to play with it. And you can if you go to the mall and you set up a kiosk and you play with it, but it ain't gonna go nowhere. It ain't gonna go nowhere because this comes from magical black women, from a magical place. And right now on this planet and certainly in this country, black women need this magic, for real. We are not healthy in our minds, in our bodies, in our spirits. We are completely discouraged and the whole world is upside down. They don't need somebody coming to them with the vibration of, oh my God, I just need some more money. Can you buy a waste bead from me? I don't want that on me. I don't want that permanently on my belly. Somebody's financial desperation. Are y'all hearing me? You cannot put hunger at the belly of a black woman not yours, not nobody's. You can't do that. You, we have to be so careful how we enter this space and do the work every day on you. Doing the work every day on you means that your strings will work, your magic will work if you do the work on you. But if you just say words and then tie that on to somebody, I hope they break. Cause that's a bind. And if you in here, come to hear me talk, then you needed to hear this. Even if you don't like it. Even if you don't like it. Because maybe some of you are in the wrong place. Maybe this isn't your form of magic. Some of you are in exactly the right place, stubborn enough to think that you're going to do it another way than God's way. You're not. It's not going to work. And so... If there are any questions that sort of fall into the category of questions I will answer, and y'all know what they are by now, I am happy to answer them. Oh, thank you so much. This has been absolutely phenomenal. I do have one question I want to ask you before we let you go. Um, and it's one of your quotes, and we, I would like, we would like you to elaborate, if you will. Um, Alayo waste beads are an experience. They become a part of you. You think that you are using the beads for adornments or for balance, but the truth is the beads are using you. Could you elaborate on that? That is, <laughs> oh my gosh. I read that quote and I was like, did I say that? 
Um, and so again, yeah, it was in the article in the blackdoctors.org. Is that you recall? Oh, that? oh my God. And so this is the deal. So this is something you all can, should know. Good. Um, a business tidbit. Those doctors and those outlets often quote me or mention Elio. I've never talked to them. I don't know who these people are. I don't know. I, I've never, I've literally, I've done one interview with Voyage LA and then I did one interview for a blog in four years. So none of this is about press that we've initiated. Like none of this. So that's what I'm saying. Like I, the, the impression that you can get online is very challenged by the truth. You know, the, the truth is way more nuanced um, and far less sexy than, than we might imagine. I mostly fuss at my daughter and shop for beads and clean the house and answer client emails about where their beads are. I mean, this is what I do. I don't thankfully make beads um, all day, every day anymore, just because I'm old and my shoulder is tight and that wouldn't work. Um, but the quote, so, so the idea that you are not simply benefiting from wearing these beads, but the beads, which is really the energy, is using you to its own benefit. Because this is how energy works. Like, I need somebody to wear the bead in order for it to work its magic. Well, somebody has to agree to wear the bead. And then the bead has to do what it's designed to do. I'm certain, again, because it works so surely, that this was the intent for all time. For all time. So of course, on the continent, men wore them for protection when they went to battle. Babies wore them so that they would be protected when they were growing up and so that the parents and the, the the, the tribe could pay attention to whether this child is growing properly, is healthy. It, it is a spiritual technology, a tool, a kind of magic that has to proliferate, but it has to convince people. And the way it convinces women, Black women in particular, is it makes us feel beautiful. But that's a tool. Making somebody feel beautiful changes them, and then they respond in a different kind of way. All of my clients are changed once they put waist beads on, all of them. Not one of them has not been changed. I have tied thousands and thousands of women. They all have been changed. I don't think that that has everything to do with their willingness because they had been themselves the whole time and they had not been willing to change in these ways. The bead has a kind of, and, and it could, it's the bead and then certainly the bead placement and the energy of your center um, it has an agenda. It uses us and our need and our vanity and our um, creative want. It uses those things in order to teach us so that we might bloom, so that we might teach somebody else. Because despite the fact that this thing keeps getting lost through time and through, you know, distance, it clearly it keeps coming back. I tell my daughter all the time, her great grandchildren will be doing this work. And I don't, and I don't think that just because I think, oh, this is a great way to make money. And I, cause there is the kind of magic in this thing that no one could resist. My daughter is a Stanford um, kind of kid, like super, super smart math and science. When she came home and sat down across the table from me and told me, I have to tell you something. I think I do not want to go to college. The only thing I can think of that I want to do after I leave high school that gives me any joy is make waist beads. I knew that was going to make me a million dollars, but I didn't get all excited. I was like, are you sure? Are you sure, darling? Because working for mommy is not going to be a super easy thing to do. Are you sure? It is a knockdown, drag out most of the days and she's growing so beautifully under the tutelage of waist beads so much of what she is learning about how to be human about how to be a woman about how to be responsible for herself and for the people around her she learns right on that mat 
So I know that that's the way to do it. I really do know that that's the way to do it. And the beads do the work, the handling of them, um, even the, the hanging of them and the, and the pulling them off. Like all, anytime you are in the energetic of handling these beads, be present because they always have something to say. So beautifully said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. What I've gathered of the entire event is just know the space and be careful with the space that we're all entering. Follow, you know, God's will for each and every one of us and be prepared to grind and do the work. That's honestly everything I could have asked for from this event um, today, Josai. And I don't know about you, Tiffany, but I feel like this would be a really solid, just overall close for us. It's a beginning, um, the end, and maybe, you know, I, I couldn't imagine that there are a few questions. Maybe you guys can jump in the chat. But what I'd like to do right before you go, because we are recording, is just if we can, um, if everyone is open, we can then just take a quick picture because we have a few of the screens open and um, we're recording. So we'll have some snapshots to send to each and every one of you. So on the count of three, we'll give your best smile and we'll take three if you're okay with that design before yeah. we go. You know? All right, I see everyone getting not situated. Wonderful. And a one and a two and a three. Perfect. We'll take one more. <laughs> cool. And one and two and three. Awesome. So if um, Tiffany, unless you have any other items to share, I couldn't imagine following up with this. Ms. Jazai, you've answered every question, in my opinion, that any one of us could have imagined to brought to the board that we listed out every, and I appreciate you so very much because I do feel that, you know, we talked about, you know, I came to you with one or three minutes, whatever you can do. So this is I was everything. Like, I was like, I was like, she don't know me. <laughs> but I, we were willing to have whatever you were willing to give and, this means so much to our group, you guys. Um, I thank you so much. I'll send a huge thanks from all of us to you. And Tiffany, if you have any maybe last comments, we'll pretty much, that, that to me, I'm full. I don't know if I can take any more. That was, that was absolutely uh -huh. amazing. One thing I think I kind of summarized it. I, I heard you say, and I wrote it the way I understand it, just I, if we listen more than we speak, we'll be better for it. That's kind of, I pulled that and I don't think you even said it that way, but that's the way. I gathered that. I would have been succinct, but I don't know how to. So <laughs> that, that would be it. So thank you so much. Thank you. We truly appreciate you and very grateful for your time. And, I, and, I, and I'm looking at the time, I'm like, oh, I went all over here. <laughs> It's all I'm, good. I think we were all here for it. <laughs> yes, we were. And I was looking at the time saying, this is absolutely amazing. Um, I couldn't ask for anything more. Grateful. We thank God. We thank God for you, your spirit, your knowledge, your energy, for your um, being able to be in one community with us and to come here and pour on the knowledge. We mm -hmm. thank you. We and listen, you. so you. this was, and it was super good for me to be able to offer in one space in one, instead of having like 15, 35 people sending me messages, this was really, because I do want to, to communicate. I really do. I don't know if any of you have ever tried to send me a message. I, it isn't my wish to be distant, but it is my wish to be focused. Yeah. It is. And so I'm happy to come into a space and spend an hour and talk to 50 people rather than answer 50 messages. Absolutely, anytime. Awesome. And just like, since I have you, I have to run this by you. Um, yesterday on your storyline, you put out a story and I agree with it. It said, in order to practice setting and holding boundaries, you need to practice, practice sitting with the discomfort of people's reactions to them. 
I'll read that again. In order to practice setting and holding boundaries, you need to practice sitting with the discomfort of people's reaction to them. You don't necessarily have to speak to it, but I have to tell you that I needed to hear that in particular, and um, it just speaks to you today. It's okay, you know, whatever the reaction is, we are okay with any and everything. And I know as a pleaser, that's tough, but I thank you for that. That's it. It's super important in doing this work to do what God tells you to do full stop. Full stop. If you are hoping the people react beautifully and yeah. warm and open to what you have to say to them, that God tells you to say to them, you are going to struggle. It's going to be hard for you. Um, Love it. Love it. Yeah, that's it. That's it exactly that today. So you're a woman who, you know, you act on exactly what you mean. You deliver that and it exudes through you. It's very natural and it's key. So thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you, ladies, for having me. Thank you. Hi. All right, how do I get out of here? <laughs> so little button says end or leave. Perfect. Thank you.